Oh, do I love a new year. It's a chance to hit the reset button, but most of all, it's a chance to make a traditional New Year's Day recipe called Hoppin' John. If you love grazing and all things comfort, this, my friends, is the recipe for you. It is so dang delicious. Okay, just to clear up anything, Hoppin' John doesn't just need to be eaten on New Year's Day, although it is a tradition in the South and especially the Carolinas to do so. There are a ton of fun superstitions with Hoppin' Johns, like the meanings of collards, meaning money, or sometimes they would put a nickel in with the cow peas and whoever got it in their plate, they would get good luck for an entire year. I'll take that good luck this year, my friends, and I'm sure you will too. With that being said, we are going to start by making this traditional African-American dish with a little bit of prep, and it starts with the cowpeas. I'm going to be using some red cowpeas that I actually ordered on Amazon. You may be able to find them in your local grocery store. If you live in the Carolinas, I'm sure they're there. Now, if you can't find red cow peas, what you can do is use black eyed peas. Red cow peas have that same sort of black eye, just like you see on here, and they will work great. Now, what I want to do to shorten the cooking process is soak them. You've seen me do this before. So I'm adding them to a container. And then what I like to do is fill it up with cold water until the water is about four to six inches over the top of the peas put a lid on it and then what i usually do is set it in a cool dark place for 12 hours or overnight let me start really quick sorry to interrupt so dang quickly but if you don't want to soak these peas overnight you can just simply cook them in the recipe but you're looking at about an extra 45 minutes to an hour to do so or another trick that i've learned along the way bring some water to a boil pour it over the beans let it sit for one hour drain them you should be good to roll now we're going to start knocking out some vegetable prep. I've got a small yellow onion. Simply remove the ends and then slice it in half. Of course, we want to remove that outside peel that's just tough and you obviously can't use it in a recipe like this. Then I'm going to simply small dice the yellow onions. Next thing I do have is some celery stalks. I'm going to medium to large dice them. Since we're cooking this for long periods of time, I need it to be bigger so that it won't cook to mush. Now I've got a couple carrots that I'm going to peel up and just like the celery, I'm going to medium large dice these. This will help in the cooking process and add lots of great flavor. And you know me, I've got to add some garlic. And of course I'm using a garlic press. I say it over and over again. I've chopped garlic for 25 years, and at this point, I am over it, my friends. So once you run it through a garlic press, just set it to the side. And then next up, I have a pound of really thick-cut bacon. And what I'm going to do is cut them until they're about an inch thick. You could go a little bit thicker or even a little bit thinner. Remember, it will cook down and shrink up. I think this is just a really solid size. And sometimes these are stuck together, so what I'm doing is just sort of separating them out. We're going to add it right to a large bowl, going to take the gloves off. Then I'm heading right back over to my countertop and on medium low heat, we're going to add in the bacon. We're going to take the time to cook these until they are a little bit crisp around the outside edges, but maybe still not as done in the center. This is just a good temperature to leave them at because you have to remember they're going to continue to cook when we cook the peas and the rice. Once they are to this consistency, I just want to set all of the bacon to the side on a plate. Now this thick cut bacon will render off quite a bit of fat. So what you want to do is remove about half of it. I suppose you don't have to remove any of it, but for me, it's a little bit too much. So I'm just going to set it to the side, use it at a later date. Now go back over to that pot. We're going to add in the small diced onions, followed up with the medium to large diced celery. Next, we're gonna hit it with the carrots, and then finally with the finely minced garlic that we ran through the garlic press. And what you wanna do is sort of sweat saute this on low heat for maybe three to four minutes. We're not looking for caramelization, we just want the vegetables to be a little bit tender. And let me stop and say, this recipe has certainly evolved and changed over the years. If you look back to this original one pot meal, you're talking about pork, peas, rice, and water. That is it. We've obviously taken it to another level and we've added things like sausage and peppers. I'm not going that overboard like that, but I do like to use those few things to help enhance the flavors and make it that much better. Here's what we're going to do now. 
Let's go ahead and grab those cow peas that have been soaking. You can see they've doubled in size, soaked up a good amount of that water that's just going to help in our cooking process and shorten up that time. I want to strain these off. Now you could rinse them if you want. I know a lot of people love the flavor that it provides in its natural state. So I'm not going to rinse them, but give them a little shake to get any excess water off. Going back over to our big cooktop and just going to scrape all of the peas into that pot. And at this point, I'm going to add back in that bacon. This is just going to make the flavors in this so good when you cook with the bacon. Add in now some chicken stock. You could use pork stock or even vegetable stock if you'd like, or water if that's all you have. Going to next add in some fresh thyme sprigs. You could use dry thyme as well if you don't have it. Now some crushed red pepper flakes. If you want spice, add a lot more than that, my friends. You know me, I can't handle it. Now I'm going to season it very well with salt and pepper and definitely do this because this is sort of going to act as the braising liquid to season up the beans and later on the rice. And then go ahead and stir to combine. So while we have a minute, I want to give you a few variations. If you don't want crushed red pepper flakes, what you can do is add a jalapeno or a serrano seeded and small diced at the same stage when you add in the onion, celery, and carrots and garlic. Right in that saute stage, just add them right in there as well. Also, I've seen some folks add in some sliced cooked smoked sausage. You do that at the exact same stage as well with the other vegetables. Now for me, I like to add some greens to this. While it's not necessarily classic, you do see it in some recipes. I just think it adds great flavors. And I'm telling you, this is one of those recipes. You want your kid to eat vegetables? This is how you sneak it in. You got a little bit of bacon, they'll definitely eat it. And they'll for sure eat all the vegetables in here. That's just my two cents and a little trick. You're welcome. Here's what we're going to do now. I'm sure you've heard it said a million times, but always eat your greens and collards are a fantastic addition to this. And like I said before, it's a great way to get your kids to eat vegetables. So to prepare these, just slice down alongside of the stem, saving the leafy green portion. We'll get up close and do it here. This is just what you want to do. You can discard the stems, no need to use those in anything. And then what I like to do is simply tear it using my hands. You could cut it, but I once learned in a restaurant that when you tear, you're tearing it along the natural vein and it just I don't know maybe it's just an old folklore but it tastes better who knows just with the way I was taught now what I'm gonna do after that 45 to 60 minutes of cooking the beans we're gonna give it a quick stir see how it looks it's fantastic the beans are not mush they're still tender and a little bit firm we're now going to add in our long grain rice I actually got rice imported from Carolina it's a nice long grain rice. It's perfect. You don't have to use that. You could use a normal long grain rice like basmati. Now I'm going to hit it in with those collards. I'm just going to stir everything together until it is completely combined. I know this looks crazy in here, but this is the way we do it. At this point, we're going to pop on a lid and it's going to cook for between 25 and 30 minutes. After that time, we're going to remove it from the cooktop. Let it sit for just about five minutes. Then we're going to come in. We're going to take that lid off and we're going to have a look. It should look nice and tight like this. It's not supposed to be soupy or stewy. You may see a little bit of juices in there and that's fine. And then we're going to fork the rice to sort of break everything up so that it's easier to eat and no big clumps of rice are in there. This is the exact consistency that you want this Hop and John to look like at this stage. My house, and specifically my kitchen, smells amazing. And yours will too if you make this. That's my promise. And to all my Comies, my chefs in training out there, you put these fundamental cooking techniques into practice. You can make anything. It all starts with those techniques. Sweating the vegetables, soaking the peas, not overcooking the peas so they turn to mush, doing these things sequentially and perfectly and practicing them. I can't say it enough. You want to do these things in repetition over and over again so you can master it. I promise you'll be the best cook in the neighborhood and for sure in the family. And then you put it to all these homemade recipes from scratch that we've been making or maybe you have recipes from scratch. You put it into practice into those things. I promise you it's going to be that much better. Now we're going to plate up in slow-mo. 
I mean, of course, we have to serve this up in an abnormally large bowl. Like I said, this is all day grazing goodness. Cannot say it enough. And then the next optional thing you could do is finish it with some sliced green onions. Again, you do not have to do this. And man, oh man, check out this beauty. If you're all about that all day grazing, my friends, this is for you. Don't make anything else. It's so good, so dang delicious. You'll love it. I swear it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like and share this video, and check out this video too. I made it, and it's just for you, and I'll see you on there.